I was tagged by Marnie, Miss Gold Girl. I'll put her channel below to do the ride or die tag, which I guess is like my favorite products of all time. My favorite, favorite, holy grail, go to, never want to be without, would take if my house was burning down in a fire. Just kidding. Some of these were really easy, very on the top of my head, and others, it was hard to separate what I'm currently loving and my current favorites and new products that I've discovered, not just like recently, but through the years, and separate that from my all time, always go back to, always wanna have on hand products. But I think I got it down, and anybody that has been watching my channel for a couple years now, most of these are not gonna become a shop to you, which is a good thing. That means that obviously these are staying true through the years. So let's get started. First up is primers. I feel like there's two different kinds of primers under that umbrella. There's the primers that are have silicone in them and just give your face like a glass, baby-like, smooth, you know, even everything, fill in pores feel. And there's the primers that give your face a really youthful glow and look really dewy and just kind of plump up your face and get it ready for makeup. So I picked two of the two character categories. The first one, as far as the pore filler, is a more recent discovery, but this is the Dr. Brandt Pores No More. I like this a little bit better than Benefit's Pore Professional. I think it's a step above. It does a little bit of a better job, has a nice little tint to it, smooths everything out, goes, makes your makeup apply very smoothly and looks really good. And then the primer that I always go to when I just feel like my skin's looking really dull and I just need to pick me up is the Too Faced Hangover RX. Both of these, I would continue to repurchase over and over again. Definitely been a lot of primers that I've purchased myself, tried from Sephora Point Perks and things, but out of all of the ones that I could remember trying and having, these are the only ones that I think I would continue to keep repurchasing. None of the other ones really struck a chord. For an eyeshadow primer, this one's kind of new, a new discovery, but again, a, an eyeshadow primer that I will buy over and over and over again. And that says a lot because again, I've tried a ton, but it is the Benefit Stay Don't Stray in the light to medium. And I put this on my eyelids. I also put it on any spots, anywhere I need extra heavy duty concealer. I put this on to prime it. And I love the even kind of like ivory color, like nude skin tone color it gives my eyes and it doesn't crease, which is awesome. For this foundation, if you were to ask me a couple years ago, I would have told you NARS Sheer Glow, but my love for NARS Sheer Glow is not gone or forgotten, but it's kind of been bumped down a little by Estee Lauder Double Wear. Ever since I've tried this foundation, and I was so late to this foundation party, by the way, but ever since I tried this, I never ever want to be without it. I, I get it, like I understand all the hype surrounding this, I think, the reason it took me so long to try is because I just kind of always think of Estee Lauder as an older, like a brand for more mature women. It's a brand my mom used for years. And I just, you know, I didn't really wear foundation probably for the first three or four years on YouTube. So I was late to the foundation game in general, but I just never thought to try it from this brand because I just correlated this brand to older, more mature skin. But oh my God, am I so glad that I did. It's the one foundation that always looks good on camera, in pictures, in person, it doesn't ever look thick or cakey. And the thing that I love the most about it is once it sets on your face, because it does set and initially when you're applying it, it does look very dewy and almost feels like you need to set something. But if you just give it like a minute for it to really sink into your skin, I feel like it bonds to your skin so well and almost becomes your skin, which I've never seen any other foundation do that. And it last throughout the day. Even the other night, it doesn't get old. The other night I went to take my makeup off, it was 11.30 and it almost, I almost, it felt like a sin taking it off because it looked like I had just done it and I did it hours and hours and hours ago. So I love this foundation. I never ever want to be without it. I'm currently the shade 3W1, which is tawny, but typically I'm 2W2. I love that. Concealer, there's been a lot throughout the years, but the one that I will always have in my collection is MAC Pro Longwear. Currently this one's a little bit too dark to go under my eyes, but this is the perfect concealer for all over your face. It covers, it sets and stays, it doesn't smudge. It's still a, a good primer to use under the eyes or even as an eyeshadow primer, which I've done, because it doesn't crease or cake or settle into your lines. I just can't use this under my eyes right now because it's a little bit too dark. But I like this because it's one concealer for both jobs. You're under the eye and you're all over the 
face, you probably would just need to get it in a, you know, two different shades. The other one that I've been using for a long time now is by Collection 2000, and I know you can only find this over in Europe, and one of my good friends usually sends me and stocks me up, but I always get it in the shade Fair or Light Medium. It's the one that I love for under my eyes. It feels like I go through this really quickly, but it's just a very good brightening concealer. This is just always the one I always want to have. I think there's a lot that have come close, but none that I continue to restock my selection of. To set everything, again, a newer discovery, but one I never ever want to be without. This is the Anastasia Banana Contour Kit Refill Powder. And yes, finally, I no longer need to search for a good under eye setting powder. It has the yellow undertone, which is why I love it the most because it's my skin's undertone and it just brightens everything. As soon as you put it on, it's like, ha. Ah. As for the rest of my face, it's very, very rare for me to use a setting powder over my foundation, especially when I'm using double wear. But if I ever need, you know, if I ever go extra heavy duty concealing and I want to set something or if I just want a light coverage and I want to skip the liquid altogether. My go-to has always been the Laura Mercier and this is not the translucent. This is the natural beige. This is the natural beige, the mineral powder. It has SPF 15 and it's great as an all over foundation with good coverage and it also is a really good light enough coverage to set any areas you want to put over top your liquid foundation. Bronzer. Again, not a hard one. So Ceylon from MAC. This is probably one of the oldest products in my collection and a lot of you might argue that it's time to get rid of it because it's probably expired but it doesn't have a funky smell it doesn't break me out and it still looks as beautiful as it did the day that I bought it. It's not going anywhere until it's gone. This is the So Ceylon Mineralized Skin Finish. I love it because it gives you that sun-kissed glow and when I think of bronzer, I think more towards the sunny bronzers than a contour. I'm really not into the harsh contour, especially for every day. But it also has some really pretty rosy undertones so I can totally skip blush on days that I just really want to get out of the house fast. And I love that about this. And then it also has like a teeny tiny bit of little flecks running through it to just give your skin like an overall glow. Speaking of glow, this will not come as a shock to you. My favorite highlighter, may it rest in peace, Dior Amber Diamond. I never want to like finish this. I use this so sparingly, but I don't know why they let go of a good thing. But this is my favorite powder highlighter. It's so subtle. You can keep your brush in here for like, 20 minutes swirling the product on and yet it still just puts on the most perfect amount every single time and just gives you like that perfect candlelit glow that we all are after. So if you ever see this again in a CCO or a blog sale or on a random shelf in Sephora that they forgot to clear, pick it up. You won't regret it. And blush, they drawer full of blushes. This one I thought was going to be really hard. But the one blush that I just kept, I, I try to ask myself, like, if I had to get rid of my entire blush collection, what's the one blush that I would keep behind? And it was this one. Unfortunately, another one discontinued, but it is MAC Instant Chic. It's probably the only blush that has such a dip into it. A lot of them don't show any signs of wear, but this one is just one, regardless of how many blushes I have in my collection, I will always go back to this. It's the same blush that once I use it, that first time in a couple of weeks or a month, I'm like, why did I ever stop using this? And I'm just like on a binge with it all the time every day. And then I remember that it's discontinued and hard to find. So I stop and then I put it to the back of my drawer and then remember it's there in another month and the cycle repeats. But I love this. Again, if it ever repromotes in a MAC collection, pick it up. Eyes, eyes, eyes. This actually was not hard for me at all. This is it by It Cosmetics and it is their naturally pretty palette and this is definitely my most used, my most loved, the one that I never want to be without. A close second would probably be Urban Decay Naked, but this one I just get a ton more use out of. I've, I've hit pan on this one a long, long time ago. I love the colors. I think it's more of a springtime colored palette, but it's colors that I wear all year round, including in this video. Liner. I have had my fair share of love affairs with liners from the L'Oreal, what was that, liquid 
Linear Intense, those were the early days of YouTube, and a lot of different pencil liners, but the one I always come back to and will always have in my collection is Black Track Fluid Line from MAC. It's the best gel liner, but looks like a liquid, just looks like liquid leather. It's always super easy to work with, the consistency is really great, it's easy to bring back to life with a drop of Fix Plus or some kind of mixing medium, and I love it. It's just easy, good packaging, really great. But as for liner, pencil liners, I would definitely say the Estee Lauder Double Wear line of pencils is my favorite. They, these are great for colored liners. If I want to put a color on my bottom, any days I don't want to wear just black, these pencils are definitely the best quality that I've tried. And I love the little smudger on the end to really give you that lived in look. Mascaras is kind of a hard one. And I don't have one in my collection, in my possession right now to even prove the case that I never want to be without it. But off the top of my head, through all the years of using mascara, there's two that come to mind. One is Makeup Forever Smoky Lash. It's a phenomenal mascara. The other one is It Cosmetics Hello Lashes. Both of those, I think, give you perfect, voluminous, don't need, don't need lashes on your eyelids at all. Really nice effect. If you're going drugstore, I think the one that I probably have purchased the most from a drugstore is the original CoverGirl Lash Blast in the jumbo orange tube. Mascara is just not something where I care to have and stick to one. I just am always curious and like wanting to try all different ones, especially with all the advertising that they do around mascara. I'm just always intrigued and like onto the next best one. So, and especially with the fibers, the fresh look fibers that I love, you really can use any mascara because those make your lashes look good with whatever mascara you're using. So I'm a huge fan of the fibers that I've discovered a year or two ago. Lashes, faux false lashes. The one pair that I have repurchased and always wanna have in my collection are the Kiss, they're by Kiss, and they are the Ritzy lashes, the Ritzy style. When it comes to false lashes, there's definitely a style that I prefer. It's the kind that is voluminous all the way through but shorter and then get longer but not too long. I cannot stand the lashes that look like they're false lashes where you're talking to someone and it looks like their lashes are going to poke you in the eye. Not for me. I like the more natural looking ones and these ones do exactly that. They are short and then they get longer but even at the end the longest lash still looks very natural and blends in with my lashes really really well. So I really love these and you can find these at Walgreens. They're really cheap. Lips. Lip liner is not something I've always worn through the years, but over the last couple years, the one that I have repurchased, the only one that I have repurchased over and over again, is MAC Soar. It's just a beautiful pink. It's like my favorite shade of pink. I think it's a shade that looks good on every skin tone, from light to dark, and for me personally, it's just that perfect pink pout, so I will always have this in my collection. <laughs> Out of my entire lip collection, between lipsticks, lip jumbo pencils, twist up pencils, lip markers, liquid lipsticks, and all of that. The only lip product that I have ever repurchased more than once is YSL Glossy Stain in number 101. And this is just, again, when I run out, I go buy another tube. Whereas every other lip product I have in my collection, I'll just, when I run out, I'll definitely find something similar in my collection and be completely satisfied. But this is just not one without, and I just, I love how it feels, I love the consistency, and most of all, I love the color of how it looks on my skin tone. So, that's number 101, it's Nude Provocateur, and I love it. Finally, setting spray, again, no shocker here, the Scandinavia Makeup Finishing Spray. Never want to be without this. Have purchased, I cannot even tell you how many bottles, I need to purchase another one again soon. It's amazing, it holds your makeup, especially in the heat and it just keeps everything looking really fresh. So those are my ride or dies. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Probably a womp 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 video for those of you that have been with me for a while. Nothing new and exciting here, just some really good cult favorites of mine. I hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. I will link everything below and you are all tagged if anybody else wants to contribute to this tag. Thank you for watching and thanks to Marnie for tagging me and I'll see you guys later. Bye. So probably my favorite out of the four outfits is the one that I paired with my black motorcycle jacket and this one is from Zara. It's pretty old but I love it because it's so worn in.